Hi guys! Unfortunately, I have been sick. We are going on week two here, and I just haven't had the energy for my usual volume of research. So we're going to do something a little bit more fun today. Being laid up with a fever and barely functional means extra time to spend on the cesspool known as Twitter. And on that cesspool, I stumbled across this gem of quality journalism making its way across social media. Watch how easy it is for a teenager to purchase a gun and smuggle it across state lines. Right off the bat, already feel like this is going to be a train wreck, but hey, I'm curious to see exactly how much of a train wreck it really is. How easy is it to traffic guns across state lines? Okay, first of all, I believe the word they're looking for here is transporting. If I buy my gun legally in Massachusetts and drive to New Hampshire, it does not suddenly become trafficking. Firearms are legal products. Unless, of course, they're planning to make a big old illegal straw purchase and then sell a pile of guns to a street gang, in which case, let me go get the popcorn while they break laws to prove that gun laws don't work. We went to the NRA convention. Nobody was ever killed by a gun. It all depends on the operator. Uh, well, guns are an object, so no, guns don't kill people. People kill people. That's an accurate statement. Obviously, this guy is not a wordsmith, and so they picked him on purpose to try and be like, oh, look how dumb and backwards gun owners are. And that feels really intellectually dishonest. Their title says gun running across state lines in under three hours. <laughs> Let's Google the definition of gun running. First thing that pops up from the Cambridge English Dictionary. The activity of bringing guns and other weapons into a country illegally, especially for use against the government. Anti-gunners love to say that guns are used only for crime and not for protection against government tyranny, but they used a word that literally means using guns against the government and are applying it to crossing state lines. This is kind of amazing. In Chicago, which has the toughest gun laws in the United States, they have more gun violence than any other city. The city of Chicago has some of the most stringent firearms laws in this country. They have the strictest gun laws in the country. The toughest, the toughest gun, gun laws, laws in our country. Yet they have one of the highest homicide rate and violent crime rates. They have the highest number of gang-related killings. Everything about that is wrong. Chicago does not have the nation's strictest gun laws. It does not have the highest gun violence. Okay, hold up. First, Nice of them to make it seem like gun owners don't know their stuff and instead are just parroting Trump word for word. Newsflash, people owned guns and were passionate about guns long before Trump was president. Number two, do these guys not realize that concealed carry was completely banned in Illinois until 2013? And that Chicago had its own separate ban on firearms and ammo sales until 2014? And even then, FFLs were only allowed to open up shop in certain areas of the city and had to videotape every single sale. It took the state Supreme Court and a federal appeals court to get these insane laws overturned. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the part of the video that originally devolved into a rant about Chicago gun laws and violent crime, but that's not what this video is about. So instead, it looks like my deleted scene tier on Patreon is getting a video about Chicago this month. Actually, by the raw numbers, Chicago is the most violent city in the country. It has the highest number of homicides annually, and every year, 80 to 90% of those murders are shootings. Chicago was also named America's mass shooting capital in 2015. That doesn't happen by being Candyland. Now, it is true that you're not going to find Chicago on a list of the strictest gun laws in the country, because those lists are typically ranked by state. But Chicago is in Illinois, and Illinois is in the strictest top 10 list according to both the Giffords Law Center and the Brady Campaign. And Chicago has its own set of gun ordinances, stricter and separate from those at the state level. 
And yet, it does have strong laws. And it does have strong laws, though, not the strongest. When you go by the standards set by the Chicago Tribune writer, then no, Chicago doesn't have the strictest laws because apparently the qualification for strict is a total gun ban. And that's, you know, unconstitutional. And the gun violence it does have might have more to do with what's happening right here in Indiana, the home state of Mike Pence and some of the loosest gun laws in the nation. Well, actually, according to Giffords, Indiana is 24th. Giffords did give Indiana a D minus rating, but there are 26 more states with looser laws. And Indiana complies with all federal laws and does require a license to carry with 13 requirements for that license, contrary to what the Giffords website says. 60% of the guns that end up in Chicago crime scenes come from out of state. We actually have a report from the Chicago Police Department that lists the top 10 stores that are responsible for selling a lot of the guns that end up in crimes in Chicago. So I'm sitting here looking at the same report and actually out of the top 10, only three of those shops are in Indiana. The other seven are all within the state limits of Illinois. And the number one shop was still only responsible for 6.7% of all crime guns recovered from 2013 to 2016. I wouldn't exactly call that a strong majority. Our buyer did need to be an Indiana resident. But we should know that because Nick is 19, he can't legally purchase a handgun. The age for that is 21, so he's going to purchase a long gun. Okay, so you had to leave the state of Illinois, find an Indiana resident over the age of 18 with no criminal or mental health history that was also willing to make a straw purchase illegally, and he still couldn't buy a handgun. Wow, but I thought Indiana didn't have any gun laws, so that's, like, kind of weird. So according to the Chicago PD, this store is one of ten where a lot of uh, crime guns that are used in Chicago are purchased. Just to recap, this Cabela's is only responsible for 1.7% of those crime guns from 2013 to 2016. And it's a Cabela's. It's not like the Bloods or Crips are walking into a Cabela's to buy their guns. So, Nick is going to buy a gun where he will be subjected to less of a background check than he would have if he were in Chicago. Well, yeah, that's right. Let's be clear here. The Nick's background check, the federal background check, is the same no matter what state you're in. <laughs> that's just how it works. Oh, look, that's so cute. The guy that they specifically got to go buy a crime gun can't actually buy one of the guns most used in crimes. So he's going to go buy a rifle, which is used in only 2% of violent crimes every year. Cool story, bro. Unlike our gun laws, our car laws are actually, there's a fair amount of regulation. Cars here are a really apt analogy. Maybe it's just me, but I don't remember ever going through a background check when I bought a car or any time that I got a rental. I'm also not aware of any state laws banning whole makes and models of cars based on some arbitrary cosmetic features. Things must be really weird where these now this people are from. And no one is saying, well, you know, some people are going to speed, therefore we should have no speed limits. Okay, they got me here. They're right. I have never heard anyone say that. But they're kind of making the point that the law doesn't stop people from speeding. The background check form, we did it all on an iPad. So that process was probably five minutes. And then him having to go in and look at everything through the FBI, I would say five to ten minutes. Oh no, how awful that technology has made background checks more efficient. I am always suspicious when these kind of videos don't actually show this process. So this is the Model 783 Bolt Action Rifle from Remington. You said this is not the weapon that was used at Sandy Hook, but the weapon that was used at Sandy Hook was a Remington. Again, pretty sure that most gun violence, let alone mass shootings, are not carried out with a bolt action rifle, but it's the same brand as some of these so-called assault rifles. So it's just as evil. Wow. I know we can all presume that this thing is unloaded, but please, for the love of God, first rule of gun safety is that you don't point it at anyone. 
Do you feel like if you just loaded this up yourself right now that you would be safe in your use of it? <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Not one bit. <laughs> well, clearly, because if it was loaded, you'd be in danger of shooting that guy's dick off. All right, we are going to go for the Illinois border. Now, we are actually going to come just short of crossing the border. We don't actually want to bring this gun into Illinois, but there is nothing stopping us from doing so. There is no border wall, nope. there is no check, and we could be in Illinois. It's in a trigger lock and in the trunk. I highly doubt that gun traffickers are packing up their goods with trigger locks. Regardless of your views on borders, you have to admit that it's pretty hypocritical for a side to say that we should have open borders between countries, but that we should have closed borders with law enforcement searching cars at state borders. Um, yeah, it doesn't really compute. The NRA supporters say that Chicago is proof that gun laws don't work, and there is a kernel of truth in that. Well, I'd say it's a little bit more than a kernel, but, you know, tomato, tomato. Could it be that the NRA is making the strongest case possible for federal gun regulation? Could it be that you're also making the strongest case possible that gun laws don't work and that criminals, including straw purchasers, don't follow the law? Yeah, I mean, that's why you need a federal standard, a higher federal standard, so that we're all safe. Um, there already is a federal standard, but I mean, if they're in favor of national reciprocity, then hey, I'm on board. Well, now we're going to take this particular gun out of circulation. Yes. Nick, you've offered to take this gun to your local police station and it will be destroyed. Oh man, he sure showed those Chicago street gangs by spending his money on a gun they'd never use and then handing it over to the police. Now we can all sleep safely at night because of this prime example of journalism. So, all right, so I'll admit that this video wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but it was still chock full of flat out lies and misinformation. And that is why those of us who do have the knowledge have to continue and try to educate those around us. This is your Second Amendment and Firearm News of the Week, brought to you by what is probably bronchitis. <laughs> Please don't forget to like, share, and drop a comment, as it really helps the channel and helps get the information out. And if you'd like to help out in other ways, or catch the deleted scenes, of which there will be many, you can head over to my Patreon, which is linked down in the description. As always, thanks for watching, stay safe, and happy shooting!